Angie Martinez in Real Life Podcast. This episode and conversation is powered by Duce. Taraji! Oh my God! My This is my ninja. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy to be here. I feel like I had early conversations with you about me want, having ideas to do podcasting or to do these kind of conversations or show. We've talked about both of yeah. our lives and our careers many times. And I was like, do it. What are you talking about? You're the voice of New York. We will follow you Aww. like this. Ooh, <laughs> you're so <laughs> seriously. You're so sweet. Yes. It's been good. It's been interesting. I have learned about people. I have learned mm-hmm. about myself. I've done some self-correcting even since I've started this. Like, and I'm, I'm still sure. doing. I'm still figuring it out. I'm still figuring out what the platform is, how we gonna see it, mm-hmm. what, what what I really care about about the conversations. Um, but it, when the one thing it has been, it has been real since yes. the beginning. That's you know? the only thing that matters. It is right. You could be anywhere, mm-hmm. and you can have the largest platform in the world. But if you ain't talking about nothing real, you gonna miss the people. I don't know. No, that's what it is. That's what it is. So whenever yeah. I get off, tra- if I get <laughs> off the track a little bit, it's always like. Uh, I don't know. This is one thing I'm working on now. I wonder if you do to this to yourself too. It's like, um, cause you've had so much greatness. Mm-hmm. You've, I mean, T. We, you know, we're friends, so we don't yes. necessarily sit around and talk about we don't. our greatness. <laughs> we just we're trying to get through the day, right? Right. But like, you have so much greatness in your life that you have given to the world, and so that comes with like uh, joy and pride and work and all the things that greatness comes with. But there's other sides that people don't ever talk about and we don't ever see. It's like, um, the disappointment, the, disappointment. the letdown, yes. the head conversations you have with yourself, mm. um, the imposter syndrome, syndrome mm-hmm. those conversations that we run in our heads. Yes. You know, nobody gets to see that. I'm trained to be on. You know what I you mean? You are so good at it too. Oh, listen, you you would never know what I'm honestly. That's why I always say my message always to humans, my fans, people that follow me is just please be kind. Yeah. Just be kind because yes, yeah, social media is where people post uh-huh. and they live this fantasy um realization. It's not real. Nobody's posting their pain. Mm-hmm. Nobody's posting the days when they don't want to when they don't give a fuck or they're contemplating you know suicidal ideation nobody's posting that right you know what i mean (laughs) they're posting all the good or on those dark moments when they come out on the other side they post the other side but no one's posting the darkness you know that's why you gotta take that social media with a grain of salt because at this point we're all Addicted. It ain't even about the kids anymore. I know. We're it's so not. addicted. It's a, we're I, all addicted. Ugh. So it's how I hate you that manage about it. myself. <laughs> I hate that for don't me. Don't hate it. Accept it. No, I hate it for me. You have to accept no, it. No, I'm trying to change it. I don't want to accept it. The only way to change it is to accept it. Here's what, here, what are you addicted to? Are you addicted to what part of it for you? All of it. Like what part though? Like, cause for me, I like the, um, I like when people like what I like. Yes. So if I'm really proud of something and I put you it go out, back. I, you I, go I po- back. I post it because I'm really proud and I like it. And then I see other people proud and they like it too. That literally gives me joy. Absolutely. But the problem with that is when they don't. Right. So you have exactly. to. Exactly. That's right. not okay. You can't live no, like that. But you have to control that. And that's the thing is how you manage your addiction. How do we manage it? Are you In always, the most healthy way. Are you always self-correcting? Because I'm always self-correcting. To I'm the point Virgo. of, uh, yeah. So like all the time. Oh, it's terrible. It's it's terrible. Things will wake me up out of my comatose sleep. You need to address this. Like, literally, I have issues with sleeping because my my mind won't rest. I will leave this conversation. And this interaction, we'll go because we going out. This is my we girlfriend. Going we out. going out after this. <laughs> after this we we gotta catch up on some real right. But <laughs> I will leave this night, and it's a beautiful night. It's a soul fulfilling night. I know it is. It's always this when we have these interactions. But I will leave the situation. Be like, what did I say? Was that offensive? Like I will, really? Oh, even it's with terrible. your friends. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I'm not gonna say I don't do that. I have done that. Um, I don't know that it's like a regular thing. I think there is a core group of people that I, most of the time, but I guess you're right. I guess even with, even with close friends, I probably, I'm always watching what I say. You know, I was like, oh my God, was that offensive? Do you think she took, well, when she blinked her eye, 
eye, her left eye. What did that mean? You know, like that's how I'm wired. Even with my mom, like people that I know that will never shun me of love because mm -hmm. they know I'm human. I still have those moments. What is that? Where does that come from? What is that rooted in? I think for me, for the Virgo sign, it's the perfection thing. If, and you still feel like this. I still feel like this, but I manage it because, because of the projects, the type of projects that I've taken on and I've seen the residual effect. I've seen from Hidden Figures how little black and brown girls have been driven to dream to be scientists, to be, you know, mathematicians, to do coding. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up in a time where I was told math and science was for boys. Mm -hmm. So I didn't dream those dreams. So I know the impact of what I do. And I know you have to take the good with the bad. Yeah. I didn't sign up this for sign up for this, for the fame. I'm very clear on why I do what I do. Why is it? Art can change and affect lives in the most positive way yeah. if you handle it properly. Like I'm clear on why I do, I'm clear on why God gave me this gift. It's not, it's bigger than me. God put us here for hum humans make the world go around. We need each other. Mm -hmm. Somebody's story affected you. Somebody's story inspired you to do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Just like somebody's story inspired me. It's so much bigger than who you are and what you think you're doing. You want to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's so true. It's so true. Or or try to control it. This, this is an exercise I'm I'm literally surrendering. I'm in it right now in my life. I'm in a pivot and a change in my life and a place in my life where I'm mm -hmm. really testing the waters of letting things happen as opposed to um, always making them happen. Not to say mm -hmm. I don't work hard, not to say I don't have a vision and I don't execute and all those things, but there has to be a certain amount of peace that you give away that it's going to be what it's going to be and it's going to be okay. Yeah. I didn't have that for most of my career. Nope. I'm just learning how to do that now and it's still a struggle. It's I don't have it all the time, but sometimes when no. I fall into the pocket... It's like, he don't disappoint you. Never. He, it's like, it's actually fascinating. And I'm you sure there's- You gotta be tapped in though. You gotta yeah. be tapped in. Yeah, yeah. So you you know exactly what I'm you saying. Know I know exactly what you're talking about. You have to be tapped in. You can't, we think we're in control. Yeah. And it's those humbling moments when we realize, oh, I gotta surrender. And I have to surrender in a way where I have unshakable faith. Because things are gonna come at you and you're gonna question your faith, you better not. Mm -hmm. You better fucking not. Yeah. Because your faith is what got you to where you are. And you know, you gotta remember life is spiritual warfare. You know those cartoons back in the day when they had the little devil over here and the angel? That's literally life, yeah. that's every day. And it's a choice every day and it's a fight every day. Like literally in today's times, my joy is something I have to fight for every day. Mm. Now that we have social media, I have to fight for it. I have to fight for it every day. And how do you choose? Like, what what do you choose that works? Like, on a good day, when you fought for it and you won, what did you do? I fought against all the negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. I chose gratitude. Mm -hmm. Whenever I feel in my darkest moments, I run to gratitude. Mm -hmm. Because that's gonna shift my whole, my my whole attitude towards life. It'll make me have compassion. Mm -hmm. It'll make me give mercy and grace. Um, once I tap into um, the fact that I'm human, mm -hmm. and I'm experiencing human moments every day, I'm not gonna be perfect. Some days, because of what I went through and my trauma. I might choose violence. <laughs> I might. <laughs> you know, but that's the battle. That's the battle of being a human. How, how are you doing overall? I just interviewed Jay Balvin and he told me, you know, he's struggled with some things and yeah. in his life too. And he um he's developed a system where he checks in with his team and his friends mm -hmm. and his family. He mm -hmm. asked he asked them, How happy are you on a scale of one to ten? Mm-hmm. And I love that. I told him I was going to steal it for the podcast. It's really like to check in with people. Like, how happy? So I will ask you that, Miss Henson. How happy are you? On I don't scale? know, to be quite honest. Why? I, I thought I was happy, but the things that I thought, I'm going to get emotional. I don't want to. The things that I thought was making me happy, they don't, they don't cut it anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I'm in a place where what does that look like? Mm -hmm. And I'm 
kind of spinning because I don't know the things that made me happy before. Like, you know, when I was going to get married and I didn't work out. It's not that. It's not marriage. It's not right. a man. It's not. So it's for me to tap in to find my happiness. And to be quite honest with you, Angie, I haven't been happy, like purely happy in a long time. Oh, give me your hand. I haven't. I'm sorry. I'm not because it's just a wake up call yeah. and I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I'm still living. So that means I have time to find it. Yeah. And and it's work and it's okay because uh -huh. it's, it's uh, for the benefit of me. Mm -hmm. It ain't got nothing to do with nobody else, a man, a friend. This is all me. And I'm, I'm excited about this next chapter and finding this happiness. Don't you feel like that could be, because I always think when I'm in a time in my life, I don't know. I just feel like we all have moments in our life where we have to pivot, right? We yep. have to pivot. Oh my God. I, I posted that. I said, it's time for a pivot. Go ahead. Well, yeah. So that's yeah. what it is. All of us have those moments, mm -hmm. right? And those moments are tough. Yeah, they're tough. Sh pivoting and shifting and changing what you cared about, changing how you view the world, changing how you got your operating Ooh. systems. It's not easy. Some no. people don't make it. No. Or some people stay still and stagnant because they're afraid of that. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of evolution. They're afraid to pivot. And it's just, so sometimes we have to go through to be, because how are you supposed to be happier if you can't be unhappy? Yeah. How are you, you supposed have to, to get to the next phase? You have to be able phase? to identify that you are unhappy. Yeah. And Does with that make you uncomfortable? Media, like not feel at all. vulnerable? You know, one thing I know about me is that I don't fear change. Mm. I celebrate it. <laughs> and as uncomfortable as it is, I know that when I get to the other side, I'm going to be a better person. I will have a story to tell that's going to inspire and help and change someone else's life for the better. And that's why when I, I talk to people, I'm like, if you have a story to tell, tell it. No one wants to hear how easy your fucking life was because life ain't easy. And nobody believes you. I don't give a you. goddamn what color you are, <laughs> how privileged you are. Life ain't easy and it's getting harder and harder every day. Mm -hmm. Right? So... If you have a story to tell, if you come through some trials, you need to share it because you're going to inspire someone. You're going to you're going to give somebody the motivation to not give up, to not to quit. You know, so I like when I'm in these places, when you're in that gray area, you better celebrate that gray area because coming out of that is your rebirth. It's your Ooh. resurrection. You can't run from that. Has this happened to you before? Or Absolutely. Is this, yeah. Many times Oh, in so life. you've had this a few times. I'm yeah. going through it right now. And, and another thing is when you see people happy, doesn't mean that they're not going through anything. Mm -hmm. You know? You came in here super happy. Anybody in this room who didn't know you or ha didn't have the chance to sit with you and have this like deeper conversation is like, she's like the happiest lady on the planet. Because you, because it's what you present as. This is what a lot of people present that. And that's how you get to the place like, mm. how did this person die by suicide? I know. Oh, I know. I hate so that. that's why I always err on the side of kindness because you never know. We all have our crosses to bear. Mm -hmm. Some wear it on their sleeves. Some are very open about it. And some choose not to for their whatever reasons. But that's why you err on the side of kindness because you never know what a person is going through. I had this weird thought the other day that made me like, because I saw all these posts about, you never know, you know, Twitch, what happened mm. with Twitch. I mm -hmm. saw everybody posting about it and, uh, and people were, it's just people are so mean and people are so uh, interested in judging and um, I don't know, just saying some smart ass shit or being cruel to people. It's like, I wonder if the whole world is, because I feel like everybody's going through something right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah. wondering if the whole world's going through something because the whole world needs to be checked about how much judgment there is out here, how much mm -hmm. mean shit is out here. I just feel like some people need to get checked. Well, what we're discovering is there are a lot of people in pain. Yeah. Because hurt people hurt people. Yeah. They have to because they have it's to true. ignore their own pain and trauma. Mm -hmm. And so that's what it's bringing up. It's bringing up the pain that people are going through. And so to shift that pain, they misguided, they misdirected, and they directed onto somebody else. Mm -hmm. And we know, you, you know, any human that can pull back and go, you know what, give them a minute. That wasn't, I shouldn't have said or did, <laughs> you know? Well, who has the time to slow down? Like the news cycle is, ah, rah, rah. you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Something happens, you're like, ah! The next thing you, it's something else to worry yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. It's so much coming at us in, 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 and light speeds 
moments. Like we don't have time to heal from one to the next. No, it's nuts. How do how are we? You know, it does so, make me feel better when I if I think I'm going through something or, I, or feeling. When something, you hear somebody else, going it through does. It. I'm like, oh, okay. So, well, you're never alone. Yeah, no. Sure. And that's the thing about this mental health piece. No one is alone. Yeah. I don't care. I can sit up here and smile in your face and be, but I and you know I'm going through shit. <laughs> Right. And you know it. But um, mm. at the end of the day, it's about fighting for your joy and finding it. Because, yes, life is going to throw you curveballs. Yes, it's unpredictable. But at the end of the day, you have it. Some people ain't waking up to figure it out and make it better mm -hmm. this, today. You know, some people, they checked out and that's what they got to go home with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the fact that you're still able to wake up the next day and try and try again, that's all you can do as a human. As long as you're learning, as long as you're learning along the way and you're not turning back. You what turn you, back, you turn to stone. What are you learning now? What is like, what are your recent lessons? Oh, <sighs> patience is always my lesson. Because you ain't got it yet. Because you haven't, you haven't, I haven't nailed mastered it. it. <laughs> I feel you, by the way, I feel you. I've gotten better. I've, I'm a I've, better version of myself. I'm than a I better was, version, but, but it's still work to do. It's yeah, not all the way. that patience thing is. I think that's, <laughs> honestly, I think that's what we've been here placed on Earth to practice patience. Seriously, well, us maybe not everybody, but that no, might not be everybody's I hurdle. Think everybody, you think? In New York, go out and listen to these damn car well, horns. In New York City is these sad. damn horns. Where are you racing to? The next red light. It's like stop. <laughs> I know my Uber driver was beeping before. I was like, "Sir, you're beeping. They can't go anywhere. It doesn't. It's, you're just making noise." See you change because once upon a time, you're like, "Beep!" Yeah, you be beeping. Get yeah, biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to find peace. Right. I'm trying to find peace by you any means to. necessary. Any means necessary in a world that is trying to cram down our throat. Non peace, like it's everything you look at, anything you turn on television is a fight. It's a fight. There's yeah. no peace. There's no rest. Fear, fear mongering. And I believe in God. I believe in love. I believe in positivity. That's what I have to lean on. Mm -hmm. Because other than that, it's darkness. I can't live in darkness. Mm -hmm. Darkness is death. You ain't living. Mm -hmm. so you have to pick a side. I want to live. So I'm going to choose light. I'm going to choose the light. I'm going to choose love. I'm going to choose positivity every time because that is where life dwells. Doesn't dwell in fear and hate. That's so good. And it's a choice every day. Like you said, you get every up today. Every day. Yeah. There are days you chose love better today. Human. I could feel it. I did. You know, I'm about to go to Bali for a month by myself. <gasps> it's my own spiritual journey. I love this for you. Tell me about this. Wait, do you normally do trips by yourself? Never. Okay, can I, I have... tell you? Tell I think me. I've told please, you this before. Please tell me. I do. I used to do this every single ooh, year. Ooh. I, I'm I'm like a year out. I haven't done it, and I'm my my spirit is like you gotta yearning do it. for it's it. Time. So I did it first. Maybe I'm like four or five years ago, and then I did it every year because when you do it. Whenever you're with somebody else, you're on their time and their energy. Even if it's a best friend, you're it's somebody to consider. It's, it's just you somebody gotta consider, to consider their problems. You can't really focus on you. Go by yourself. You wake up so by yourself. Mm -hmm. It's your own thoughts. Mm -hmm. It's your own. It's you force that you just and it, and you could be at peace and mm -hmm. comfort. I love it. I I haven't never done it a long long time. Normally my trips by myself would be like four days. I'll go mm -hmm. go to Turks, sit in the. What, by the pool mm -hmm. for four days, books, pen, right? Right, right. You know, just whatever. But Bali sounds... Listen, it's twenty. It's going to take me 24 hours to get there. That's by myself. That's not, hey, girl, let's get a mimosa. Like, that's literally by myself. And then I'm going to be there by myself. It's Wait, sober. Wait, for how long? A month. Wow. Literally Is this month. because of where you're at and you're trying to like... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got to find my happiness. And mm -hmm. it's not in my friends. It's not in my mama. It's not in, you know, it's me. It's me. And this is the work I got to do. So that means work gets shut down. Everything. Well, it's, it's the perfect time. I'm the type of person that if I'm not my best, I don't want to be around people. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like God has given me a gift to lift people up. And so if I'm not capable in my own being to do that, I you get, I you get low. I, I don't I get low. And yeah. I don't want to go because I don't want to bring everybody down. Yeah. I know that about me. Yeah. I know that I'm a energy transfer. 
like everybody is. But I'm clear. I, I wonder that for you sometimes, as your friend and just watching you and, and fan of your career, you're mm-hmm. uh, you're always the life of the party. Your life I, of the party, mm-hmm. and that, it was it was my best friend that said it. That's she was like challenging. Sometimes. It is very challenging. Mm-hmm. She said, "You know, I watch you and Taraji. No matter what you're going through, you will go into it." She said, "You're such an empath. You're so compassionate." That no matter what you're going through, and I know, you'll go into a room and you'll see people not able to pull themselves up and you'll be that person. And you'll ignore your whole, Mm -hmm. what you're going through, your mental state. You'll ignore it just to lift that room up. That's exhausting though. Right. Yeah, that's tiring. And I'm just getting to this I mean, it's kind, but it's like. I'm just getting to this mm -hmm. point where it's like, it's empty for me now. Mm -hmm. Like, I can do it and I, I love it. I love to make people happy and smile, but then what about me? Because mm-hmm. I go home in the shadows and the four corners of my room. Who's there to lift me up? Mm-hmm. Mm. So this trip to Bali ain't got nothing to do with my friends, my mama, my dad, <laughs> my yeah. kid. No, this is me. What are you hoping to get out of it? <sighs> I'm trying to find that happiness mm. again. The happiness that that was innately in me, you know. Were you that, like a happy kid, like a happy? I was. Uh, yeah. I was the only kid. I, you know, I I could play by myself. I had the most incredible imagination. That's why I'm an actress. That's why I am the actress that I am because I had so much time alone, and I all I could do was create and pretend mm. that the other person was sitting. I had to pretend you were there. I didn't have, you know. <laughs> You know what I mean? So that's me. That's what I do. And it's in me. Like, I grew up like that. But um, I just hit my glass ceiling, I think. You know, lifting rooms and being the life of the party is like, where is your life? Yeah, but, but what a blessing that you could, number one, be comfortable enough to say that. Mm-hmm. Clearly, you got to be comfortable enough to tell your whole team and everybody involved with you, like, I'm going away for a month and being okay with that. And and just have the the will and the ability to be able to be like, it got this is really what I dark, need. Angie. Mm-hmm. It got so dark that I couldn't see. And I was afraid because for the first time, the person who everybody thinks is so strong was not. And I was scared for myself. Mm-hmm. I don't think I would ever harm myself, but suicidal ideation is real. Mm-hmm. It's real. I get it. I I don't have those thoughts. I haven't. I don't know. In my life, I'm sure I have, period. But, but I understand. It's real. I understand how. I understand. Especially now where things, you see people who are strong, you deemed to be strong or happy happy yeah but they're doing the same thing you said you do you show up in a room you smile you hug people you give them love that has nothing to do with what's going on inside yeah yeah i mean thank god i'm i'm as somebody who cares about you i'm grateful that you have the will and the um and the care for yourself to even make that yeah. Make that shift. Make yeah. that change. I'm proud of myself. Mm-hmm. I feel very proud to be able to look in the camera and say, I'm not that strong. Like, mm-hmm. I'm fighting for my joy every day. It's a fight. Every day is a... F- I feel like I'm fighting for my life, mm-hmm. you know? Because I feel like so many people look up and they're counting on me. You know what I mean? I don't feel like no hero okay baby you want to take a second i'm not a fucking hero Mm -hmm. like i'm not i'm not perfect i'm somebody who i'm a human i'm flawed i'm trying to figure this thing out every day and um it just for me right now it just seems like it's getting harder and harder but is it is it is it my perception is it what i'm putting on it is it you know, when you get into a dark place, you go, you can compound yourself with the darkness, you mm-hmm. know, and it's all about your thoughts. And it's like, am I doing this to myself? Is this happening in real time? 
I just, I'm finally to a place in my life where I just need to, it's like a, whoa, everybody stop. Thank I got to step off. Thank God you could do You know that. what I mean? Yeah, thank God. Can we get a tissue too? I just want to make sure she's okay. Baby, you are, it's crazy because you talk so much about like what we do and that we do it for other people. And yeah. Even you sharing your story, I know this is hard. And even as your friend, it's hard. I kind of like want to stop. And, if, but this and is listen, just, if, if after this, and you know, I and listen, if after this, you had said to me, just so everybody's clear, if after this, she says to me, cut it all out, I would, no, cut, I would cut I'm it all out. I'm not going to cut it all out. You know why? Because but I'm just saying, I, I know, and I feel safe with you is what yes. I'm saying. Well, just like, know that because I feel safe, but I also feel at the same time, don't cut none of this shit. You know why? Because people need to see it. And I think that's all we got is paper towels though. For it's, pretty okay. Face. it's okay. It's <laughs> okay. It's okay. I'm okay. okay. It's the perception. No, this is what I'm you know, saying to you. The people, reason I don't stop you. Yeah. The reason I don't stop you, even though as your, uh, my heart, as your right. friend, is like, I want to protect you. But um, there's somebody who is in the same place you are or worse and hasn't doesn't have the... You've done a lot of work on yourself. You've done yeah. therapy. You, you've read a lot. You mm -hmm. are... You have been, you traveled the world. You mm -hmm. are... You know, you have the ability to say, I'm not good and I'm, I'm going to shift and I'm going to do these other things. There are people right now that are not good but don't they have, don't know how to say it. They don't know how to say it. They don't even have the the capacity to kind of understand what it's going to take to get you out of it. And so you sharing that I think is really important because we have all been there. You've seen me there. Oh my God! Remember we for your birthday? Yes. I was not good. No, I know. I kept my eyes on you. No, but that's I was the not thing. good. But I was coming out of it right no, in that moment. You were, and I'm. And the reason why I knew you were coming out, because you came out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You could have been like, I'm not coming. You could have, but you came, you know? And even though I know you weren't at your best, but you were at your best because you were honest with yourself. You were honest with us. You were honest with me. I knew exactly where you were, so I didn't push hard. Like, where Angie? She not at the, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. because you were honest and you communicated, I was like, give her, let her sleep in. Like, she needs... Like, this is not about a turn up for her. This is about something else. And what happened at the end of that? Everybody walked away from that celebration a better person. Mm -hmm. My other girlfriend had just lost her mother. Like, it was... And it was like all your friends. I didn't uh, really know all of them like that. Right. You invited me and I was yep. like, and I needed to go away. It was This was after the accident. Yep. I hadn't really come outside yet. My body was still hurt. Yep. I still was just, I was tired. Yes. I just was like tired. I didn't know what was next. I didn't feel cooked. I didn't feel connected to nothing. I was just like, it wasn't like I was sad. I wasn't like sitting in my room right. crying, but I just was like, I couldn't, I was just dull. It was an odd moment. It was just, I just was like stuck in kind of like, what had happened, how I had changed, and I didn't know what was next. next. So I was just uncomfortable. And then you, you invited me, and so I went, and I was a little quiet, right? Like <laughs> You were, but then your awakening happened, and you yeah. was like, oh, my God, I didn't know how much I needed this. I did. I got in the water. The ocean, too, mm. is very healing. The ocean is very healing. Um, but I tried. I was trying to be, in, and I thought I was presenting well. I didn't know anybody could see it. And then you said to me on the trip, you said, I just want you to know, like, I see a difference from you from the time you came here to the end of the trip. Like, you have let, let a weight go. Yeah. And it felt, you know, it was nice to have a, it was, it was nice that to have a space where, like, I didn't have to tell you every sing, yeah. single thing I was feeling. But, like, I also had a space where I could feel. You were seen. Mm -hmm. Without having to have to talk about everything. Because <laughs> I go through stuff and yeah. a lot of times I don't want to talk about it. You know what I mean? Like, it's triggering. I don't want, but I just want to be in a safe place where I can just be me what it, wherever I am right now. It might not be the best me, but it is the version of me. It's always the best and, you. And, and the <laughs> fact that I'm being accepted and celebrated in this version of me is what's important. Mm -hmm. And that's what keeps me going, right? Because then it dispels the, I have to, the perfection. I have to be or look or, you know, my friends don't care. They will pull up on me <laughs> if my hello sounds off. They will pull up on me. I don't care what country I'm in. I remember when John Single passed away. Mm. That, I was going through a lot. And then that happened. And my best friend did not like, she said my hello sound weird to her. 
she flew from D.C. to Vancouver, pulled up on me. She said, yeah, I don't trust what you're saying on the phone. I need to see. You know, Mary will do that. I think that is a very important uh, thing for people in life. I've yeah. talked about this on the show. Like the people that we choose as friends mm -hmm. literally can change your life. They literally <laughs> lift you up. They save you when you need to be saved. Or they bring you down. Or they bring you down bad choices, right? Mm -hmm. You you have you have always been somebody who like shows up for like you take friendship seriously. I take it very seriously. Mm -hmm. You can you can't choose your family. You can choose your friends. Mm -hmm. You know how does this all this like? You're gonna go to Bali for a, a <sighs> month, which I'm so I'm like low key jealous, but in a oh. good way. But I'm so happy for you. Oh. <laughs> you're going to Bali for a month. How does this? Like when you're going through this pivot in this moment mm -hmm. and these things, how does that affect your career and your career choices? I don't like, give a fuck. You know, I don't care mm -hmm. because um, I have to be in control of me. I can lose myself giving it all to the industry, mm -hmm. doing things because I have the job to do. Fuck that job. If I'm not mentally well, if I'm not good, I won't service that role. Mm -hmm. I won't service my fans. They will not get the best of me. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. I just think because like, I know you did that show, you're talking about mental health yeah. and you have these products and you know, your brand is not, it's, you're not just an actress. Like no. you have, <laughs> right? You're not just an actress. And so I just wonder how your brand shifts as you shift. You um, know what I mean? Like As I, as I um, understand what my life purpose is, then it shifts. You know, I get clearer on what my purpose is. You know, at first I thought it was just to be a glamorous superstar. You know, then it was like, but no, God gave you the mic. What you going to say? Don't fuck it up. Like, you have the mic. Are you going to use it for the greater good? What are you going to do with this mic? And so once I realized the impact that I have on people, I took it very seriously. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't about picking the most positive characters. People need representation. So here we go with um, Hustle and Flow. She was a whore. <laughs> Let's just say what it is. She was a woman of the night, right? <laughs> it's sex work. Right. That's real. Yeah. People do that. Mm -hmm. Who am I to judge? Mm -hmm. How do I make her human? How do I make people empathize with her? How do I make people look at the film and go, how do I find this sugar? I want to help her. That's my job, to make these characters human. I love that. To make you not judge them, right? You see a black woman, she's loud in public. You might think of Cookie before you judge her. Mm -hmm. You might go, there's a reason why she's like that. You know what I mean? Cookie. cookie Do you miss right? Cookie? Um, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> You okay with her being in the I'm past? I'm okay with her being in the past. I think she's been done. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, yeah. there's you did nothing it. to, you know, bring back for her. Like, she did what she was supposed to do. She ignited yeah, be... a generation. Mm -hmm. She um, energized. She lit up that TV. <laughs> uh, and she energized people to be themselves, yeah. whatever that looks like, and be unapologetic. You have to be so proud of even what you've done to now. Like, if you did nothing else, like. I'm very proud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am. Um, Do you spend time on that, thinking about? Because uh, I would imagine that you're like me, where you're like always like, but what am I going to do next? But what do I do after this? Ooh, so what? Okay, so we have a great conversation. What, am I, what is the next conversation? For me, that's my shit. It's yeah. like, and I'm trying to not be like that. I'm trying to like, not to not be motivated, but to be um, okay with however I'm being used. Switch, you know what I'm saying? Switch your narrative. Okay, get, help me. How are you going to use me next? Yeah. That way it's open. You know, how are you, what platform, how are you going, you knew it was time for you to move on. Mm -hmm. You knew that. Mm -hmm. But what am I doing next? And you are on to it. This is how Thank people want to see you. That We want to hear your voice of New York. I'm sitting here. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> people, you. you built that. You did that. And mm -hmm. people want to hear your voice. It doesn't matter. You ain't got to be here or there. Wherever you go, we going to follow. 
<laughs> I love you. Thank you. <laughs> you know? No, I appreciate that. But I don't take it lightly. I feel no, like I, I, you no, have you to, don't. the same way you don't take your, your shit lightly. It's like I, I take, okay, this is what you want me to do. I'm going to do it. Or this is what's my calling. Or you put me through these things in my life and you give me like a yearning to want to share yes. deeper, more. And so then let, how, that's why I asked you, how does it show up in your career? Because for me, it's all together. Absolutely. I, I, people like separate, but it's all together. Or at least I feel most whole and most... Um, just peaceful when everything kind of al is aligned mm -hmm. and truthful and like you know if i have to act one way over here and then go over here and be I'm this good it's, it. it's exhausting to, yeah. to do that so if i could create this platform where i could kind of talk to the shit i want to talk about and and i can control it and that's um that's like a great i don't know it's just been good it's and been you worked your ass off to get here yeah and you're at the place where Word. people will listen thank you baby. they want to listen they want to hear what you have to say because it matters and mm -hmm. it means something thank you yeah. yeah, but see, I, I, I don't know. No, what do you mean you don't know? I think that's when you start getting tapped into ego a little bit. No. Like, you know what I mean? Well, see, because I know you. Yeah. You have your ego. Which, now, y'all got to know ego is a good thing. You need ego. You got to have That's what Mike Tyson told me. Mike Tyson gotta told me. You fucking have it. You need ego. What you are you shying need, away from it for? You had to check it. But, you know, they say that ego is like, that's how. That's Unchecked. Why, but that's why we suffer. Unchecked ego. Ego is the main cause of suffering. Unchecked ego. Okay. Unchecked ego. All right. Is the main source of suffering. Ego is there. So how do you check you, it? What is it? Bitch, settle down. You are not the best. <laughs> See, here's the thing. It could be taken I'm away. I'm going to tell you That's what That's the ego, thing I do tell myself. This is not a dig to anybody. Strive to be whatever you want to be. But when you're connected, and you know that what you've been placed on this earth to do and the messages that you've been placed on this earth to relay are much bigger than you, there's no space for ego. But you have to come to that first. See, I don't strive to be the greatest. Let me tell you why. You did at one point. Let me tell you why. Striving to be the greatest means you got to shit on somebody else. Am I right or wrong? Usually. Mm -hmm. Well, does it? I don't know. I don't know. Does it? Maybe you're not doing it intentionally. Because to be the greatest, you're shunning somebody else's talent. How how did how dare you say you're the greatest? Why well, wouldn't what never makes say you're the greatest? I'm the greatest? What makes you the greatest? What I'm saying when someone's striving to be the greatest, what makes you the greatest? Yeah, well, that can't be your goal. That can't be what you're rooted in. Like, you can't be trying because to be better than everybody else. But, because if you are, you're, you're you're serving a different God. Well, you understand what I mean by that? Yes. Do you understand what I'm you're saying? You're serving your ego. You're serving your you ego. You feel me? I do. Right. No, no, I never did. I, me personally, I don't ever do that. Me, I'm always trying to top myself. I ain't think about nobody else ever because right. that's where you slip up. Mm -hmm. Once you start looking over there and be like, her show is killing it or their show is killing it. And then you try to do what somebody else does and what you're not here to do. That's when you start tripping up and whatever. Be clear whatever what lane. it is you're doing. Yeah. So when a person goes, I want to be the greatest. I, this is deep. I don't even want to go here. No, come on, please, please. I'm just saying. Watch them. <laughs> I don't want to get myself in any trouble, mm -hmm. but just look at the lives of the people who said I'm the greatest and how it ended. That's all I'm going to say. Oof. God is the greatest. You feel me? Mm hmm I do. And God put you here to do his work. Check your ego. I don't strive to be the greatest because that's serving something else. The humble man knows that God gave him those talents to change and shift the world into a better place. But when you get into I, me, I, 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 that's another God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. In what? a real way. Yes. Yes. This is what I'm trying to tell you. You was the one who told me I had to have an ego. No, you got to have it. <laughs> you got to check it. You got to check it. It's good. It's healthy to have an ego. Keep it checked. I don't think ego. I think confidence, and I think um, I think confidence. But we comes all from... have ego. Every human has it. Brittany, it's do I have fight. ego? Be honest. It's our fight. I love you and I respect you so much. Yes. 
I do. We human. Yeah. You can. I'm not say- asking this. Between, I'm not gonna trying to get you in trouble. I'm asking. This is a genuine question. Yeah. I really would like to know about myself. In what it's ways? Like a bad thing. You, no, you, but I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I just want to understand it. Like, in what ways does that show up? Come on, Britt. Tell me what. Tell me. What's the question? Sorry. In what ways does my ego show up? In work, 100%. When you, it, it correlates with confidence. But when you walk into a room and things are supposed to be set up, you're quick and sometimes sharp when correcting other people. So I correct. So, so, <laughs> well, I because I care and that's about that's not a bad thing. It's that's not. It's I don't not. think see, she's that, not saying it's a bad no, thing. It's not. You asked a specific question. Yes. She's not saying it's a bad okay, thing. Okay, but let me say that's this. That's how you perceive but it. But let me say this. Okay. She perceives that as ego. Mm-hmm. I don't. You perceive that as work. I perceive that as in I care about something because mm-hmm. I know what I'm doing is important. Could be potentially, hopefully, that's the goal, important mm-hmm. to somebody. And so when other people don't show up, it, it, it makes me, you know, I don't have time to ego, slow, to I, slow let me roll explain. the, the yeah. correction. No, of, that's that's different. Ego is, I don't want to, because I don't want people to beat me up and go, Ugh! but ego to me, honestly, is when you compete with other humans. I, I'm going, my show has to be number one. My show has to be fucking, no- Okay. <laughs> Your show's care. not going to be number one. I mean, yeah. it may get great numbers, you know but what? everybody's not going to identify. You understand what I'm saying? So so that's where ego shows up. Does that make sense? It's also comparison. Anytime you Absolutely. get that moment to think like, well, I aspire to be like this person or this is my... Comparison is, this, 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 so, is, a, a is, trap. is a trap. Comparison is a it's trap. A we don't do that. Trap. But I will say this. Ego I was... is definitely in there. Because because what you're trying to do in in, in that moment is be better than that person. And and I will and, say this. and the sad thing about it is yes, your show is great. And I'm talking to myself, but you're not going to connect to everybody cuz everybody don't identify with you. So check your fucking ego because somebody else may deliver the message in a way that somebody else will hear it better than the way you're delivering the message. That's why you got to check your fucking ego and there's room for everybody just because your Mm. show is great doesn't mean somebody else's show can't be great like me as an actress how do i how am i the fucking greatest well all this good work out here how can (laughs) that's how i have to check my ego so what do you You understand how does that show because we we were talking about this before you got here about the awards Mm -hmm. when you get nominated for an oscar Mm -hmm. and you show up that Mm -hmm. night i got twitches I, how much? How much of your ego is in that room? I have checked my ego. Like, <laughs> first Since of all, then, or my that, ego has been then. checked uh-huh. because when I didn't get nominated for Katherine Johnson, mm-hmm. where I played a rocket scientist, smart, intelligent, beautiful woman, I didn't get nominated, right? But when I played the help, who wasn't as glamorous, and I was supporting. In the supporting category, I was nominated. I got to check my ego again. See, when you get in, I was very clear when I had my conversation with God. I said, I want longevity. I want work that's going to last beyond my my life on this earth. I want work that people are going to study long after I'm gone, right? I'm very clear on that. And a lot of times that doesn't come with the accolades. But the accolades are the people studying, going, see this moment right here? You understand? Yes, I do. In this moment, I finally understand. Yeah, it's not necessarily this thing that man gives me and say, because men are fickle. Humans are fickle. And what they're feeling is the best thing that year. You know, I have no control of that. And also those awards are Political. I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah. How do you go? This one is better than that. But let one. me tell you why I understand you. Now, it just when you would keep telling me you have to have ego, it wasn't connected for me. Right. Right now I understand. You, you get know it? why? I get it. Here's why I get it. So when I got nominated for the people always were like, you gotta be in the Radio Hall of Fame. I was like, fuck the Radio Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. What does that do for my everyday life? How does that serve? How does that the people who listen to me on the radio or listen to me on the, they don't that doesn't, I go in the room, those people don't really know me, so why do I care? Mm-hmm. But when you show up at the college, in the broadcasting class, and there's mm-hmm. a wall, Dick Van Dyke, and Bob Hope, and blah, 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 
and now Angie Martinez is on that wall, that's when, you know, you have to be like, the, the ego has to kick in a little bit. Cause mm -hmm. I had to like, I had to show up for all those things from like you said, cause it's political, right? And so mm -hmm. I had to, but again, is that ego? I don't know. That's like representation. No, representation is important. It, here's the thing. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Ego is good. You gotta have it. Don't shun it. You need it. That's the thing that gives you your confidence. That's the thing is it gives you a zispa. <laughs> like right. you have to have ego. But ego unchecked is detrimental. Mm -hmm. Not saying you can't have ego. You have to have it. We all have it. We all have it. That's like I said, that's what gives us our confidence, right? But you have to check it and you have to keep it grounded because an ego unchecked is when you get somebody who thinks they're better than you or the greatest. And it's like, bitch, I'm going to tell you what you're not going to do. You're not going to diminish my work. <laughs> why do we kick into that? that? That's like, that's rooted in trauma. That, that's been rooted in trauma. Why we kick into that? Or trauma. Yeah. Or trauma. Mm -hmm. You know? know what I'm saying? Oh, you, I thought you said trauma. drama. No, I trauma. Drama. No, trauma. That is rooted Definitely in drama, trauma. For that, sure. That, that, that's rooted in people that telling us. That creates drama. That's rooted in people <laughs> telling us that we couldn't be anything. Yeah. That's rooted in us not seeing enough representation yeah. of people that came from where we came from and had success. That's rooted in all those things. And see, for me, I didn't take it and be like, I'm going to be the greatest. I was like, we can be the greatest. Like, just because, like, oh, you know what bugged the fuck out of me? And I get it. But when Viola won the Emmy, and I, mm. this is what I would do. It's anybody, I don't care who that was. Like, you went, I'm going to get up and I'm going to cook. That's who I am. Of course. But it was a very weird moment in that room, in that moment. Why? No one, everybody was like, huh? And then it was a headline. Why is this a headline? I was a little irritated by that. It really irritated? It irritated me well, because that's what you do. Like, why is this a headline when humans are happy? You know why? Because it was, it was a great moment. It was just a little weird when that was a headline. When her, like, even though they, yes, they gave Viola all of the, the glory and the, the, the press. But it was like, it really just needs to be that. Like, her speech was incredible. Why are yeah. you? <laughs> Making this another thing? Yeah. That I, just what you, I do anyway. Like, yeah. what? But it, I get it because the room was, it, it was a strange moment. Wow. Like, I was expecting the room to be like, ah! but it was like, hushed. <laughs> it was like, huh? what is she doing? Like, what? Y'all don't do that. <laughs> Y'all don't celebrate y'all friends. Like, I, whatever. Okay. I get That's it. That's just you. I accepted it. It was fine. But I, it was a you, weird moment for me. You gave Regina. That's what I do. That award. That's what, I mean, and I, when I saw that and she was like, because you know that's my friend, yeah, right? And she was like, oh, my God. Like, I knew I won when you opened that envelope. Because <laughs> oh. I was like, because <gasps> you know that's my friend. She knew. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, who everybody else was, want, every, who else was everybody I going to do that was, for? Everybody wanted it to be her. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. we, we grew up watching her. God. I'm so glad for her to have gotten her flowers, you know, while she's still here, mm -hmm. you know? She's a she's a gift. She's definitely a gift. So a, a gift in in the arts and a gift as as a friend. You are a gift too, baby. Thank you. I hope you go to Bali, and I hope this pivot and this shift is otherworldly, and you come back and you give us this version of Taraji that we've never seen before. Me too. That's what I'm hoping for. I just for me, like I said, I just I want to tap back into that raw happiness that I that I had. And got lost somewhere. I don't know. I'm gonna find it though. I'm fighting. <laughs> well, you got you got people in your corner. Yeah, I know. I feel it. We I love feel you. you guys. I feel your prayers. I do. We love you. I love you more. Taraji P. Henson, everybody. <laughs>